Hello, everybody, and welcome here to this Circle of Light meditation. Nice to see lovely people here. Um, I'm on Zoom and on Facebook at the same time, so hopefully that is working because I never really know. Um, <laughs> We had lost power for an evening, um, and then we had no internet for a day and a half. I put my earpiece in, and so that was fun. <laughs> but I found. Let's hope that it actually works, and that I can to be on Zoom and on Facebook Live at the same time. Uh, all right. So let me see. I'm joining, adding other people who are here. So. This evening, um, we'll connect with the energy of uh, Buddha, which who's an ascended master, who uh, we all know who Buddha is, um, I think. And um, it was yesterday that I was just connecting in. Sometimes I just connect in with, with light, you know, with divine light and see what wants to come in. And that was the energy that wanted to come in, was the energy of, um, of the Buddha, who some people say, you know, um, Siddhartha Gautama, I think, was his actual name, was an actual person who lived, you know, thousands of years ago. Um, and then, and then similar to Jesus, it's like the, the consciousness of this ascended master can appear in different places and in different people. Um, but the energy, that was the energy that was coming in. And, and I will say it's interesting because for me, I grew up um, Christian in a congregational church. And then I um, be quickly became disillusioned with it when I was a teenager and all these weird things were happening in the church with, with the minister sexually harassing people. And <laughs> I became very disillusioned by anything having to do with church, which, which it continues to this day. Um, and I was, um, but after, during that time in my late teens and early 20s, I was very, I was almost an atheist. I was very much not really believing in anything. Uh, more of an agnostic, had some very amazing experiences um, with light and with actually it was it was Jesus, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, and I still, but I was still skeptical. And so it really wasn't until I started um, doing yoga in college that I became more spiritual. And then when I was in graduate school, I um, started learning about Buddhism. And I started really from my aunt, um, my dad's sister, my aunt Jane, who's my daughter, Alice, his middle name is named after her. Um, and she, she taught, she was, had practiced Shambhala, but Shambhala Buddhism for a long time, along with my uncle, who's her brother. Um, but, and so that, so that was like a really interesting introduction for me into just working with the mind. And it was this book, When Things Fall Apart by Pema Chodron, who's a Buddhist nun that my sister had sent me. Um, back in 2007, I guess, no, 2006, or, and I had gone through this breakup, I was engaged to somebody else at the time, and we had been together for four years, and we broke up, and it was very painful for me, and I was depressed, I didn't want to get out of bed, didn't want to, um, didn't really eat very much, I was losing a lot of weight, and I was, I just was living by myself in graduate school in Athens, Georgia, and, and um, that book saved me, it really, it was like my Bible. I would read a little bit, hi, um, every day, and and then I was. What I learned is I'm not. I have these thoughts that I don't have to listen to. I don't have to believe these negative thoughts that I hear in my head about myself or about other people. And that was my first introduction to the concept of the ego. Um, and and so I started practicing meditation. I started going to this. Um, it was, I would go to Zen Buddhism sometimes, Buddhist centers and some Shambhala Buddhist centers and they're different. And I just, I just started doing meditation. And what I learned from that was I'd had this pattern of dysfunctional relationships. And at the time, that's really what I was working on was just like, why do I keep attracting these same situations over and over again? And, and I can't just keep blaming my ex-boyfriends. There must be something, what's the common denominator here? Hmm, me, <laughs> what was I contributing to this situation? So really it was through meditation that I started, that my life started changing and, um, and it saved me. I was, it was, got me out of depression and, um, that was, and so then it was soon after that, after I, you know, I was living by myself for a year, um, in Georgia and I really 
just with the practice of Buddhism, I learned so much about how the mind works and how to detach from the that ego mind, the thoughts that are always, you know, spinning through our head, chatter, 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 you know, doubting ourselves, worrying about things, comparing ourselves to other people, thinking worst case scenario thinking. And I and so the the Buddhism that's a philosophy is absolutely transformational and so this is this it was really a foundation for me in the work I do now of learning how to meditate and learning how to um, quiet my mind and and then I went on and learned more about different forms of meditation from John Kabat-Zinn um, you know mindfulness meditation does a great book full catastrophe living wherever you are there wherever you go there you are which he wrote and from different people um, Thich Nhat Hanh who is a um, I thought I had his book right around me here somewhere, but anyway, um, and so with any like organized thing, you know, take there's some issues with Shambhala Buddhism for sure. And I, I never took the path to becoming a Buddhist because I didn't like all the, you know, the dog, some of the dogma and doctrine behind it. But there's so much in the philosophy that is absolutely just um, so powerful, so transformational. And so now, you know, with this, What's happening now um, on, I'm just, just talking talk about this real quickly because this is my only chance to speak to some of you <laughs> weekly. Um, I, I've been feeling really hopeful. I'm just going to pause and shift to current events <laughs> for a moment. I've been feeling really hopeful about what's happening. Um, I wasn't always feeling hopeful and some of you know that I was feeling very discouraged um, by all the, you know, 3D fear-based stuff. But there are so many people are awakening. So many people are waking up. And this whole virus situation is, is causing it. And I think that's partly why um, we chose, a lot of us, our souls chose to be here during this time. And so I, I can't tell you how many, you know, I'm blessed to, for people that find me all around the world to do it mostly it's Akashic Records readings. And they tell me about these things happening in their lives. And I just, I, I'm so lucky to hear you know, from all these different people and also on, you know, my emails and social media, but, and even in my own family, um, my dad, who is a judge, you know, left brain, I come from a very left brain family and he, he's friends with this other judge who's retired. And he was telling me the other day, first time we'd see that we had this outdoor cookout, Thanksgiving cookout, because that's what they were comfortable with. Anyway, um, he was telling me, I literally almost dropped my fork. He said, my judge friend was telling me about the Akashic Records, that he's interested in the Akashic Records, and that he has had these experiences of going in tunnels of light. And I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I was like, You're, he knows about the Akashic Records. And my dad's like, yeah, and I told him about you and your website. And I was thinking to myself, what's on my website? Because <laughs> some of the stuff is a little uh, triggering to some people. Um, anyway. So he, he was telling me that his, he said, oh yeah, he's very interested in consciousness and spirituality. And it's, it was so amazing. Like this is coming from, you know, these, this person who was a lawyer, his friend, his, my dad's spiritual too, but his friend was, you know, they, a lawyer, super left brain profession up to a judge. And then he's retired. And I was thinking to myself, well, he's probably cause he's retired. He's not in that system anymore and in the legal system. And so he's had time to um, open up open his third eye. So it was really just another, you know, instance. Yes, Cheryl, I feel so hopeful too. So it's, it's really, it is happening. People are waking up. And I think for a while when we saw, you know, the, the dark forces, the dark controllers, whatever, they're, they're trying so hard to, um, to stop the awakening, but it's just, it's, it can't be stopped. People are waking up. Um, the old, best thing we can do now, I believe, is to hold space, you know, hold the vibration of love, of understanding, of compassion. And, you know, I've kind of, I've gotten a lot of it out of my system, mostly, of, you know, all the anger. Um, and even, you know, being able to witness people who are still clinging to 3D, who are really suffering. I've, I heard from a few family members that they're just really unhappy in their jobs. They're just suffering. It's sad, you know, it's a, it, the 3D is becoming more and more unsustainable it's, it's causing a lot of misery, unfortunately, and um, more families are, you know, leaving public schools. Not that, you know, I'm not going to say that, you know, you should do that if you have, oops, if you have um, kids, but certainly, 
what's happening in public schools is, well, it's sad, right? It's just very sad. Um, some kids' souls are meant to be there for whatever reason. Their souls have chosen to experience th that type of oppression. But, um, but I think at some point, it's like our souls will be like, all right, I had enough of that. I'm ready to be free. So anyway, um, whatever's happening, let me turn this light on, get a little more light. Um, it's, I feel very hopeful. You know, I, I was blessed to meet with this consciousness group, uh, our meditation group I meet with monthly. Um, and we went, we all had Thanksgiving together. Most of us did. And we were in, I think there we were, we were talking about, you know, this, this whole virus thing is, is happening to the extent that it is and all these, you know, mandates and um, controls that are nothing new, right? It's just so obvious now. It's almost been, it's almost like what will, how much will it take? For people to wake up when and people wonder when is this going to get better when are the you know things are going to lighten up and it's like well when most people wake up <laughs> that's it's it's to that level i believe and then comes disclosure about things that have been really been going on for years maybe ets making themselves known to us as i had i don't know this person's here but i've heard some people share some amazing co contact experiences with ets and meditations and I certainly have had that. Um, anyway, it's it's happening. It's very exciting. Um, so just, you know, play the game. I've been playing the game. If I have to wear a mask sometimes and I go in a store, whatever. Although I, the more I go to more and more places and they're just not doing it because it's just people are done or over it. Um, anyway, but, you know, play. it's a game. It's playing the 3D game and... Um, knowing that we're still free, we're still sovereign, we can create the new way, we can create these little subcultures, uh, you know, homeschool co-op I'm in, we're just doing these amazing things with kids, just being free, playing games, and sharing each other, with sharing love with each other, um, just, anyway, there's a lot of happening that we're not going to necessarily hear about in the news, right? So, have hope. Um, there's a lot of hope, and, and for those of you who are um, interested in doing this, you know, and learning more, deepening your intuition. Um, a lot of people, it's interesting, recently I've had more people ask me about, they want to do, learn, they want to do this, they want to learn how to read the Akashic Records, they want to open their third eye. I'm in the middle of teaching an angel class right now, um, but that'll be, this This class I'm teaching now will be the last class, like short class I teach for a while, um, just because I, you know, I've been doing a lot of classes for a while, and I'm not, I won't stop, but but I've decided to take it to the next level and offer a longer program, a certification program to really train people deeply to do, to help people, to help people expand their consciousness, to help people shift into 5D living, to help them really cope because people, a lot of people are confused. They know something's happening, but they're not sure what, and they need help. They need guidance more than ever. Um, so the, I'm talking about the intuitive guide certification program that I've created starting in January, um, you know, about seven people. There's still a few spots left. I know some of you are interested in it. Um, so that's what I'm going to be really focusing my energies on for the next year is just training people pretty intensively to, to share light, to help um, other people raise their vibration, to, to move more into the fifth, fifth dimensional new earth consciousness. Um, so anyway, there, that's just a reminder that um, that's happening and I've extended the early bird discount um, for a few more weeks because I had a few people ask me about that. I know it's a weird time, you know. I know there's um, finances can be really hard right now. Um, but I will say this is the new industry. People want help. Spiritual guidance is I, I'm 99% sure. I feel it that. Um, this is going to, there's going to be a huge economy, a spiritual economy emerging um, because of people going through these awakenings and wanting to know about their soul um, and wanting to know, what, I hear this all the time, what's my purpose? What am I meant to be doing? How can I, how can I remove my blocks? So if you want to do that and help people do that, um, then check it out. I'm posting the link here in Facebook and I'll post it on Zoom too. And if finances are an issue, let me know. We can work it out. I want to make this happen for those of you who want to do it. Okay. I'm going to stop talking now. Uh, well, talking about that <laughs> and do the meditation. Okay. So, um, 
let's connect <clears throat> with this energy that wants to come in. So if you want, whenever you're ready, you can close your eyes. I'm going to record this. All right. So just closing your eyes and just getting comfortable in your chair, taking a deep breath in. A slow exhale, settling into your body, settling your energies down. Another deep full inhale, breathe into the belly, breathe so much air. And then pause. This is full diaphragmatic breath, brings in a lot of oxygen, and then just slowly, slowly exhale out as you let your belly sink into the spine, let your shoulders drop. Let your whole body begin to relax. One more deep, full breath in. Wave of air going up into your heart, to your collarbone. Taking a little more in and then slowly letting it out, letting your whole body deflate like a balloon, letting go of any tension, any stress, anything not serving you, let it flow out through your body, through your mouth or nose. And then just come into awareness of the breath. Just observe your breathing for a moment here. Just noticing the rise and fall of your belly, noticing your heart beating. When we do this, we are actually becoming the observer of our experience. Just by noticing our breath, we're kind of bringing our consciousness outside of ourselves, outside of our human selves. And by doing this, we go up into our higher selves. Just looking at ourselves and all oh, this lovely person here having this human experience with all its ups and downs. And this is also coming into our God self, connecting with that divine I am presence within us, all around us. It's the presence that is in between our thoughts, that is in the space and the silence. And so just let's bring our awareness into that. And the next breath in, just observe that before you exhale, there's a little pause. And then you exhale and before you inhale, there's another pause this moment of suspension when you're not breathing in and you're not breathing out it's just a stillness a pause so see if you can just become more aware of this pause and as you do that you're connecting with source energy and there are many expressions of that source energy and one of and there have been many beings who have walked this earth who have connected with that energy many prophets wise women and men one of those was a man, young man known as Siddhartha, who became later known as the Buddha. And he is now often referred to as an ascended master who's helping us expand our consciousness, helping us learn 
quiet our minds, to be still, to connect with our higher selves. And really through that, we come into experiencing ourselves as expressions of love. and of simply just being, because that is what consciousness is, it simply just is, it is the I am presence, it, it is, it doesn't do, it just is. And so if you'd like, you can open your hearts now, bringing in light, Feeling light flowing through the top of your head. This is, this is how we can raise our vibration to align with the realm of spirit. Just feeling light. It's a frequency and it helps us connect because the spirit realm is at a higher vibration than we are operating at in our dense human bodies. So just feel this light flowing through your body, up and down, circulating around flowing through every cell, through every limb, through every pore and membrane. It's really strong in your heart, very powerful, like this magnetic flashlight, this floodlight. And then it also it flows in and out through your third eye, in and out through the crown chakra. I'd like you to imagine now that you're connecting in or inviting in the presence of the Buddha this divine being of light, this ascended master who became enlightened and released the need for a human body, having had expanded his consciousness to reach what some call the state of nirvana, releasing the cycles of life, the need to repeat the cycles of life. And so this energy of the Buddha is here to help us learn to connect with our inner selves, to let go of thoughts of the ego, the false ego self, to activate our inner light, to open our third eye. The process, the practice of quieting the mind meditation is about activating who we really are, activating the new parts of the brain and stepping fully into our light bodies as divine beings of pure light and pure love. So take a moment, maybe you imagine an image of what you associate with the Buddha, a peaceful meditative image or just a feeling, or maybe there's a color And just take a moment to imagine if I were to connect with the Buddha, what would that feel like? What would he look like? What would he say to me? What questions do you have for him? And you can share and then ask a question about how you can heal in your life or what you can do to expand. So I'm going to give you just a few moments now to just connect. Just noticing, asking, receiving, letting your mind be a blank slate as you notice what floats in.
you've lost the connection any time, just coming back to light, coming back to this heart energy and setting the intention to reconnect. always nice to give thanks so just giving thanks for this energy for this moment of peace which is really what this is it's just quiet stillness it's like taking a nice deep breath it feels so grounding and cleansing and just Really see if you can make a note of this moment, this pause, this stillness that you've invoked to remember how good it feels, how just at one with all that is that you may feel right now. Because we are all connected across time and space. It's all about energy vibration when you are at one when you are at peace others around you feel that and it brings calm and it brings love and it brings contentment and just a feeling that is all okay because it is you're waking up from eons of slumber eons of mental servitude, mental slavery. We are freeing our minds, we are freeing, freeing our hearts, we are freeing our consciousness as a collective starting at an individual level. And for this guidance we've received this evening to the energy, the, the energy of the Buddha, of, this master of pure light and pure love, we give deepest thanks and gratitude and to all the other beings of light and wisdom and healing who have been with us, we also give thanks. Take a deep breath. Slow exhale and just begin to come back into your body. Moving your hands and feet. It's nice to bow if you haven't done that. Bring your hands to prayer position in your heart center. Bowing is just reverence, it's respect, it is humility, which some of us need more than others, myself included sometimes. Just honoring yourself, honoring this divine space, honoring each other. There's so much to be hopeful for. If you want to take another deep breath in and out, and you can begin to come back into your body, stretching out, moving your hands and feet. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. Hopefully that was helpful in some way. Um, when I was connecting with the energy of the Buddha earlier today, or was it yesterday? It was yesterday. Um, often, as you may know, the ascended masters, they don't really like to um, identify with their individual selves. So even when it's, you know, one being that I might be connecting with um, or trying to connect with, they often speak in we and that's because they don't identify with ego. They are, they have transcended ego. Um, so it's very interesting sometimes to have to, when you connect with that. Um, so 
yes, keep the faith. Um, there's so much hope that energy of stillness and of peace and calm that we can invoke. I don't know if you felt that, um, but it is really just, it's being, it's stepping into our true selves, into our higher selves. And that is the new earth, that feeling, that contentment of all that it all it is okay. It is what it is, even if we don't like it, even if, can we release judgment? Can we release attachment? Can we release um, expectation? Can we, can we be gentle with ourselves? And, and um, of course, one of the major uh, messages from the Buddhist philosophy is non-attachment. And that is actually really important because we get very attached to our stories. We get attached to people. We get attached to um, uh, habits and patterns of behavior uh, that we're not even aware of. And this practice of meditation, what I say to people everywhere, I, whoever I con come in contact with, if you do one thing, it would be start meditating every day. A few minutes in the morning is what I recommend. Just tell yourself three minutes or something and off. And that it, it is absolutely life changing when you just develop that, you know, you come into that place of stillness, it starts to rewire your brain, the feeling of overwhelm of like, oh, I have all these things to do. It just it starts to help bring clarity to that. And so maybe you sit for longer than five minutes, you know, or three minutes, but telling yourself, I'm just going to try it tomorrow for a few minutes. That's how I started doing a regular meditation practice. And now what I do is I just get up in the morning, do, I do stretches, you know, yoga, and then I just sit, you know, and even if I only have a few minutes that day, it just brings me into this space. It, I mean, I'm a lot nicer to my kids and my husband when I do that. Um, and it just brings a sense of clarity to everything else I have to do in that day. Uh, this sense of possibility, just um, calm and just hope and light. And I usually do end up, I bring in light. Um, connect, say, you know, say, give thanks to my angels, to guides, um, all the divine beings and ancestors. And so it's, it's just, I, I, I believe this is what everybody will, everybody will be doing this someday, just like we get up and brush our teeth every morning, we, whatever, take a shower, wash our face, this is going to be how we operate. So to get through this time, this, I highly recommend starting that just tell yourself tomorrow, if you don't want to be doing it, I'm just gonna do it tomorrow. And then you know, maybe you'd write a few notes down, like how good that felt. I just quieted my mind and that felt so good. And I, you know, was able to clear some thoughts. And even if you have a moment, just like a few moments of not thinking about anything, that's success, right? Like, good job. You've done it. Um, and then you just keep doing it more and more and more. And then the moments of stillness and of space when, when you're just having quiet will be get longer and longer. Um, and then eventually you'll you'll be in the middle of some you know stressful situation you'll have this ability to become the observer of what's happening in that moment of oh i'm feeling anger i'm feeling um uh, whatever you're feeling and detach from that emotion and you'll, you'll be able to let go of the negative thoughts of the ego telling you oh you can't or this won't or you'll never that or blah 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 um, and be able recognizing that those are just um, ego thoughts that you can release of course i do there's it's easier said than done some of that stuff if you want help, you know me, I, pro I do a lot of this work um, with people individually to help them clear, train their brains and do writing t tools and hypotherapy to really clear the negative ego because it can be buried very deep. So meditation is not like a be-all, end-all cure for some really deep trauma that's buried in the subconscious mind, but it is the core of everything. So, and it can be life-changing um, and it's, I, I, I wouldn't be here doing any of this without meditation. So, all right. Um, and obviously the Buddha and Buddhism is, is the best, is one of the best places to learn about meditation. It's taught me so much and it is much of who I am today is, is because of what I've learned from Buddhism. So um, thank you for being here. It's been an honor and a blessing and a pleasure. Um, don't forget to check out this intuitive guide certification program. Um, if it's calling to you, if not, then just come back here again um, and enjoy the weekly meditations. And um, if you need additional support, you know where to find me. Okay. Many blessings. Much love to you all. Have a nice night. Bye.